Welcome back. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner Metazone, Rovi and M Scribe, and today we got some more Crypto Slam. Crypto Slamming in? Yeah, and Ordinal Takeover. Mostly too. Ordinals. In, uh, either Ordinal Takeover or Ordinals. Slumpening? Like they failed, dude. No. Again. <laughs> According to Binance, but yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, so let's look at uh, Crypto Slam, the best website in the universe. It's pretty cool. And uh, we have Bitcoin. This is just 24 hours, right? Yeah. So Typically, we do seven day. Just, you know, you know, we do these ordinal overview analyses like once a week, typically. So Damn, right <laughs> behind Ethereum, dude. <sighs> Damn. That pesky Ethereum. What is that anyways? It is pretty fucking pesky. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless... <laughs> Bitcoin's still chugging along, dude. You know, ordinals are coming out. There's like new collections hitting the space from time to time. Yeah. I mean, it's not like the most vibrant and like, you know, because there's a lot of like anticipation right now for runes. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we're witnessing I mean, the calm before the storm. It's pretty vibrant. Uh, no, it, yeah. I mean, I guess it's down 16%, but. No, no. I mean, ordinals obviously, I mean, we call these things ordinal takeovers, but I think we need to rebrand. It's like ordinals have like. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Ordinal, like, homeostasis or something. Because <laughs> <laughs> just ordinals are just here now. It's really not the yeah. new thing anymore. It's just ordinals. Yeah. yeah, it's just ordinals now. So Bitcoin and um, the fungible and non-fungible token space clearly is part of the conversation, you know, whether you want, want to believe it or not. Yeah. It just is at this point. So, so yeah, there's more evidence of that. So uh, some other people agree. It's a very, very notable institutional, institutional grade. That's right. Actors agree with us. Yeah, so $1.5 trillion asset manager Franklin Templeton says ordinals drive positive momentum in Bitcoin. Innovation, specifically. Yeah. A thousand percent. When was the yeah. last time you ever seen this much, like, attempt at conjuring up new innovations for Bitcoin since the introduction of ordinals? It, probably even, way back in, like, 2013 or something. Yeah, like and even those attempts, they didn't, like, muster up all this activity. Correct. No, this is the actual first time we're, like... Innovation resulted in uh, like actual human activity. <laughs> additional development, developer activity. Yeah, and, and like uh, additional liquidity entering into the space and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So Yeah. Uh, yeah, so shout out Franklin Templeton. They've done their research. They've done their digging. And they have come to a very sensible conclusion. You know, ordinals, I mean, Bitma I mean Bitcoin was already like bullish enough, but this yeah. ordinal stuff makes it even more interesting. Yeah, and if you read this document here, they include, in part of their fundamental analysis, they've included Bitmap. Mm. Yeah, yeah, of course. Bitmap, one of the top notable yep. ordinals in the whole space, even though some people don't like to acknowledge that. <laughs> yeah, It's it's there. The evidence is there. That's why Franklin, Franklin Templeton's not on like Twitter looking for alpha. Yeah. They're, they're actually digging deep into the uh, the data yeah, that's right. Uh, to make their conclusions and their thesis, right? It's like, oh, bitmap, that's clearly an important thing, right? It's conjured yeah. up a lot of value, right? We should probably pay attention to that. Yeah, and... Uh, As we do. And other news here, like... The other <laughs> yeah, side the, of the, the coin. antithesis, yeah. Yeah, so at the same time, $1.5 million... Or $1.5 trillion asset manager um, talks about ordinals in a positive way. We have Binance announces... It can't really keep up with the pace of ordinals, so therefore they're shutting down their ordinal. Well, marketplace. that's what you tweeted. Is that <laughs> is that actually no. what they said? No, the, actually what they said was <laughs> that they're trying to uh, reduce their product offering and streamline their products, and that's it. But really, um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Refine what that even like reduce their product offering. Yeah, just like streamline it. It's Meaning like, like this. <laughs> so think about it this it's like way: they're spread too thin. They're spread too thin. They they have like a set amount of human power. And it's and it's they're all working on different things. And now someone came in and said, "You know what? We need to streamline this stuff. Yeah. So we're gonna cut out the fat." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're hurting. You're hurting me here, dude. <laughs> what, what else are they saying? And, and then they're like, "Okay, no more ordinal marketplace wow. on Binance." That seems kind of egregious, doesn't it? I don't. It maybe from our perspective, because maybe we actually truly do li live inside of like an eco chamber <laughs> that we've yeah. created for ourselves. I don't know. I, I feel like that's not the case. I think Binance is slipping here. I think they're getting pulled in by, like, meme coin madness. You, you know what we really need to pay attention to is, like, all those stupid memes out there that are making yeah. us millions of dollars a day. It's like, this Binance stuff, I mean, this ordinal stuff is is important, but it doesn't just make us enough money, in other words. It could be that. I, I mean, that's that, how businesses operate, right? Yeah, you say trim the fat, literally. Yeah. So I mean, whatever that's, it is, yeah. Yeah, that's, that is what that is, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, they're not exactly clear and I'm sure it was, you know, this article is like making a bigger deal than it seems, but also a lot of the liquidity up for specifically ordinal NFTs, it's on magic Eden. Yeah. Right. So it's probably like, dude, you know, I, I mean, I know Binance is a, is a megalith, so you wouldn't expect them to kind of like, you know, uh, bow down to anybody. In yeah. this case, they make so much money on like you know shit, shit coins. I don't think they really need to like really focus this much on this stuff. So it's acceptable. It's not necessarily like the signal that ordinals are dead. Yeah, but some people are like interpreting it as such. But yeah, yeah. I mean, Binance. You, when whenever you think about NFTs and ordinals and all that, you're, you're not thinking Binance. Not at all. Right. So not even like, a little bit. Yeah. All right, so moving on. So it's like big news, but not really. It's kind of like it yeah, it feels like a big headliner. It's the same thing as like uh, Disney and and Nike or whatever. They're all like, we're, we're not doing anything with the metaverse anymore. That's true. We're, we're axing our metaverse divisions and focusing on like AI. Yet, yet all these like institutions are saying a multi-trillion dollar opportunity. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, I guess it's more like we're taking a pause until this industry actually like uh, matures a bit further, possibly. Yeah, figures out what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, I, and you know what? I kind of get it. I kind of yeah. get it. Yeah. It's like you guys all liked ordinals a week ago. It's like now you guys are all talking about runes. Like, what the fuck, dude? Where's y'all's conviction? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, I get it. Speaking about somebody who knows what they're doing, Muneeb comes in with a tweet and he says, Devs picked the uh, the instantiation block. Bitcoin block 839,000 will kick off Stacks Nakamoto rollout. And the happening at 840,000, which is April 20th, Nakamoto rollout will happen over four weeks until activation. So basically, um, right before the happening is the Stacks Nakamoto, and it's going to take like a four weeks to actually <laughs> be implemented. It should be an interesting period, dude. Yeah. I mean, L2 is already like a, a, a saturated space on Bitcoin. It's like, it's almost hard to keep up with to the point where we, we really haven't been trying that hard <laughs> to keep up with it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like letting it do its thing yeah, on its course. Let them battle it out, and yeah, eventually it's gonna be pretty clear and obvious which of these are uh, like the actual winners of this race, I guess. Yeah, but Stacks has always been in the conversation before anybody, right? So this has been highly anticipated. We, uh, I mean, I've used <coughs> Stacks myself personally. It's you know, it's in dire need of this mm -hmm. upgrade for yeah. sure. I think a lot of people have been waiting for this, so. All these protocols that are building on stacks, I'm sure, are also like very eagerly waiting for this to roll out because now you're going to have uh, a sensible user experience for their DeFi apps. So mm -hmm. we're going to keep our eyes on this. This isn't exactly like 100% ordinals relevant, but it's in, nonetheless. It's in the realm. It's in the space. <laughs> yeah, well, all L2s, I guess, have some, some part of the conversation, right? Because yeah. at some point, ordinals are, you know, either more L1 innovation occurs or... You know, we're going to see things like like Merlin emerge and just like kind of like s siphon away some of the network effect ordinals have created. Yeah. You know? this, right. is, this is the natural order of things. All right. So I think we talked about this tweet before, Leonidas. Um, yeah. I just wanted to re revisit this conversation once again. Yeah. So what Ethereum do do? Ethereum doesn't have dozens of fungible and non-fungible tokens. Um, it only has ERC-20 and ERC-721. And he's referencing runes being like the de facto winner to fungible tokens on Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah. Which we talked about like a couple of days ago or something is like, man, that's, I understand the hype and stuff, but uh, you know, we, we got to continue the conversation around other fungible token protocols that are pushing the boundaries of, uh, of like functionality forward. Yeah. Right. We Agreed. don't want to just completely abandon that as like, that is not a necessary component to like, you know, fungible tokens on Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I get it, right? Because, you know, meme coin season is, is in full swing. So let's not, like, convolute, like, all of our happiness with, like, you know, technical complexity, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, you, you got to take it, everything anyone says with a grain of salt because there there could be, like, um, agendas associated, um, some bi bag bias blindness. Mm. It's three Bs, dude. That is three Bs. <laughs> the BBBs. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, these uh, other these others that uh, Leonidas is re referring to, they're still cooking away. So yeah. we got some updates for BRC twenty two point oh. Yeah. Which I mean, Bob Bodily has like the inside scoop, and uh, yeah, here he is breaking it down. Yeah. So BRC twenty two point oh, is it enough to compete with with runes? Um, so in a nutshell, inscribe EVM smart contracts to Bitcoin. And it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't have to be EVM. It could be any programming language. Correct. And uh, on on any stack. 
Yeah, uh, it just seems, you know, EVM is very, like, widely adopted sure. across this industry, so... Yeah, for Web3 standards, it's yeah. a good good play. Correct. Upgrade indexers to be able to run EVM smart contracts, code, simple EVM integration, include an inscription ID with your BRC20 transactions, indicating which smart contract function you want to interact with, and then for the indexer pulls in the relevant smart contract code, pulls the input from your BRC20 transaction, then runs the input through the relevant code, updating BRC20 state accordingly, and then you're pretty much done. Yeah. Yeah. So basically you are running logic that is put on an indexer through EVMs mm. and you're running that logic for your BRC20. So now you can program functionality to your BRC20. But right. you still you still got to rely on an indexer, which which is fine, right? If your indexer is trying to decentralize then you got a pretty good concept brewing here. Yeah, which I'm sure will happen. It's just a matter of I guess um, you know, we have the firsthand experience of, like working with a decentralized indexer, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Um, and the the I guess the technical challenges with implementing I guess new functions, right? It's not like this like overnight thing. Yeah. So I guess like f- figuring out like what the right framework for that, maybe just to improve the efficiency of like new function addition, is a, is a very important part of all this. Why maybe it's taking BRC twenty so long to kind of like push this through right because if you don't know who we're talking about we've been working with benny and tap for a while now who pretty much does this yeah right they've been doing this <laughs> yeah which is pretty crazy that you know it's like brc20 a lot of these people propose these new like ideas that have really been around so i don't know maybe people just aren't paying attention danny plainview here saying like yo we do this with cbrc20s yeah how else do you think we're building moto swap you know get fucked <laughs> <laughs> and it's like you know what you know it's it's all cool and all that you guys are doing this but you know it's you, you weren't first so you know go you know get lost yeah that's kind of like this or you're not casey rodimer right so it's like you know go fuck yourself yeah <laughs> it seems to be like the sentiment here it's like dude yeah this seems to be like the only way to do it uh as of right now right yeah it's the only way to do it and i mean it's a you know when you're when you're looking at different blockchains like ethereum and solana they're different ways to do the exact same thing for like automated market makers, yeah. DeFi. Yeah. And so on Bitcoin, there's just a different way of doing it. Correct. And uh, of course there's going to be trade-offs because you're leveraging a lot of functionality on the indexer, but nonetheless, if you want DeFi, you can have it, right? A thousand percent. Yeah. It's something I guess people need to get used to from like an ethos perspective is like, yeah, we're using Bitcoin as what, like a data layer, data availability layer mm-hmm. and just executing all the, uh, the actual, uh, important stuff i guess yeah the, the, uh, off chain so it's like it's it's it is quite the uh the flipping <laughs> as far as like how we uh initially view web3 and decentralization and blockchain all this stuff right 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 you do have a lot of off chain reliance and dependencies again yeah. right so it's like fuck it's like we're kind of like we're doing that <laughs> right yeah. as opposed to like depending completely on something um i don't know like a smart contract layer embedded in the layer one itself yeah, I think ultimately any functionality that's added to these fungible tokens, it gives people the opportunity to experiment. And so you take those True. experiments, see which ones work, you implement them, and then you kind of build off of it. Yeah. So speaking of TAP, uh, TAP also had, it seems like everybody's just kind of like coming out full swing now. Got all the runes are like, yeah. You know, it's, it, this is why competition's good, right? It's like runes are coming. Now all the fungible token protocols, like, dude. They're putting out like their their biggest feathers, right? Here for peacocking <laughs> yeah. amongst each other. It's like, right. we got you guys. All right. So track here is for the final uh, ecosystem product introduction. And we have what is TAP. TAP protocol allows for secure and accessible development on the Bitcoin network and offers an unprecedented flexibility. Simply put, TAP facilitates building on Bitcoin in a decentralized manner without compromising on security or scalability. Mm. So it's a good uh, short thread here. Right. So it's just a reiteration of things are on the horizon. Their initial ethos and mission statement is uh, still intact, right? And they do yeah. have these um, these early users like Ghosty, Traverse, and et cetera, looking to deploy DeFi like product suites, right? But the next tweet is really what's important is like I guess the introduction of a new a new word, right? Yeah, a new word. It's called promises. Yeah. So it's coming to tap protocol promises are a new function that unlock a completely new approach to computation that is not dependent on execution of arbitrary EVM code. 
staying na native to the Bitcoin ordinals and thus closer to L1 promises will allow for DeFi features such as staking, lending, bonds, and more promises will, once activated, implement our original ordfi idea. Yeah. Here we go. So this is, like I said, this is the peacocking. Yeah. This is what you got to do in these times because, yeah, they, you know, Leonidas raises the question or the idea is like, you know, which of these... <clears throat> Are we going to see what on Bitcoin what we saw on Ethereum? Like everything consolidates to a single, mm -hmm. a single protocol, right? Standard. Uh, I don't know. This it doesn't necessarily have to. No, it doesn't go down like that. I could see like these different L1 meta protocols, you know, becoming their own internal ecosystems in the same sense, like you know, individual layer one blockchains with their own yeah flavors and spins on like you know block time and block size and whatever yeah. else yeah. proof of stake proof of work they have their own independent ecosystems right yeah that's so right. why why couldn't the meta protocol space kind of like manifest the same way on bitcoin yeah i mean i feel like different developers have different needs and they're going yeah. to leverage whatever uh protocol enables whatever it is that they want to build yeah yeah and it's it's either that or just a wait for like runes to like make an update yeah which i mean it's Pretty likely, I, w I would assume, like somebody will, will emerge in attempt to, you know, bring more programmability and uh, functionality to the Runes meta protocol layer. And then Casey's over there advocating for somebody to like hook this whole thing up to Lightning Network. Hmm. You know, that's a weird request. Well, that's like his motivation, I think, like from the get. You know, he, I remember before he even like spun up Runes, he was telling everybody like Taproot Assets is actually like the best thing. Yeah. The best token protocol out there, guys. Why aren't you guys using it? Yeah. And then he's like, fuck, I guess they don't like it. So it's like, I'll just, I'll build something I'll, like I'll similar it. to it. Yeah, reskin it <laughs> yeah. in a sense so that it's compatible with the Lightning Network. Mm -hmm. And you guys will like this because it's me. You like me, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, all right, now that I did this, it's like, now go hook it up to Lightning Network. Right. You know, so who knows what like stake he has, uh, whether it's like ideological, it's like this, he just truly believes Lightning Network needs adoption. Yeah, the space is weird, dude. I know. Bitcoin is weird. <laughs> the Bitcoin space is very... There's a lot of uh, ideologies at play. Yeah, things that aren't logical are taking off. and uh, yeah. But I suppose that happens no matter what, like in different chains too. So For sure, yeah. I guess crypto in general is just weird. <laughs> For sure. We need psychologists in here like dissecting what the hell is happening. Uh, uh, no need, no need. <laughs> <laughs> the market tells all, dude. Yeah. The market really does tell all. Psychologists have no space, like no, no weight. So I guess when the number goes down, you definitely should feel sad. Not unless you like, you know, jump off board and, you know, get on the next one. You know? Yeah, I guess if you... If you're like if a perpetual like motion. You if purchase you stay, a put. Or whatever. And it goes down, yeah, you make money. Yeah, you stay you stay complacent. Like you typically, man, you get burnt in a lot of cases. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, like EOS, That's true. EOS got pushed off the top 100 like yesterday. Oh, it did? Yeah, because of wormhole. So it's like, imagine if you were still like there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta be, you gotta be moving, dude. In yeah. this space. Yeah. I didn't know that. Now it's not 100 anymore. It's, 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 that's the end of an era. Yeah, dude. That, that's sad. <laughs> it, really. it had so much potential. <laughs> exactly. That's my point. You know. Damn. This space is just. It's imagine, just imagine raising four billion dollars and not like not maintaining top 100. Yeah. I know. Imagine. And there's things up there that's like totally grassroots like like ordi yeah ordi's top 100 yeah <laughs> you know, it's fucking insane so yeah that's crypto in a nutshell ordinals i mean yeah it's it's evolving for sure right mm -hmm. and yeah it's up in the air we don't know what the fuck is gonna manifest still yeah it's been more than a year and um all we can do is keep our eyes on everything dude pay attention but clearly, you know, we're on the side of the developers and that's why we build on tap mm -hmm. and we're excited for BRC 22.0 so that we can see more developers build cool shit yeah. under that protocol. And we we're hoping something like the similar emerges for runes and, and it just devs have like real space on the L1 infrastructure layer to build. Yeah. Because if people just build meme tokens, I mean, shit sucks. Yeah. It's hard to talk about because no I mean, what, what is it? I mean, what do you say? I don't know. I you get, I I can't imagine this channel if like all we did was just follow the the next like meme yeah project. It's like yeah, numbers gonna go up yeah, and then, like that's it. <laughs> I don't know, but you guys like point us if you know like any good like content creators who just like nail meme meme culture. Yeah, let us know. I would like to know like their their magic. Like what is it that they tap into? Yeah, they must be like 
on the same wavelength, dude, as like the zeitgeist. Exactly. That's what it takes. Yeah. So, yeah. Let us know because we are definitely not that. <laughs> we are not meme chasers in any way. Yeah. All right, guys. That's it for us. If we miss anything, let us know in the comment section below. Appreciate you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>